In this video, I'm going to go over the tricks and strategies that I use to come first in my university subjects consistently. And that doesn't actually require you to spend all your time studying. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Shane and I'm a third year engineering and commerce student at the University of Sydney. I also completed a year on exchange at Imperial College London for a mechatronics engineering component of my degree. So far in my first three years, I ranked first in four of my subjects and I've also been in the Dean's List and also received academic prizes based on my results. And a lot of this was actually achieved while I was working in a part-time job, working three to four days each week. So the first tip that I can give you guys is to make sure you have the correct mindset. If your goal in university is to just, I want to come first in this subject or I want to come first in my degree, that's actually the wrong mentality and all it does is just stress you out more than you actually need to be. Instead, what your goal should be is just try your best. This way, there's no pressure on you to get this marked, I absolutely need this or else I'll feel like a failure. In the end, after you've tried your best, you'll get a mark back that you're quite happy with and all that means is you'll be pleasantly surprised and happy for yourself. For me, my goal was just to do the best I could overall, make sure I didn't fail any of my subjects and make sure I tried to achieve at least a distinction average, which was the bar I set that would force me to require my university scholarships. I never actually had the intention of coming first or ranking first or even in the top 5% for any of my subjects at all. My goal was simply to just do the best I could and make sure I got a mark that in the end of the day I would be happy with and not really compete with any of my peers. You also need to know that you can't do well in every single one of your subjects. So what you should be doing is making sure you focus specifically on what we call WAM boosters. For those of you not in the Southern Hemisphere, WAM stands for Weighted Average Mark, which is similar to what the Northern Hemisphere would call GPA or grades. So a WAM booster is a subject or course that is likely to boost your WAM. What this means is it's a really easy subject to get a very high mark in and you want to be focusing on these subjects to maximize your marks to boost your WAM overall. On the other hand, there's subjects called WAM killers and these are subjects that's very difficult and very hard to get a very good mark in. For example, it might be just everyone is marked very strictly or the assessments are just very difficult and most people don't do so well. Again, these subjects can be different for everyone. Some people might like a subject a lot find it very easy, for them it might be a WAM booster, but someone might find it very hard and for them it could be a WAM killer. What you should be doing is to be understanding your own strengths and weaknesses and finding out which subjects are WAM boosters for you. For me, these were subjects where a lot of logic and calculations were involved. So these included financial math subjects, such as accounting and basics of finance, and also a few probability math subjects and also one introduction to engineering subject. I knew these subjects was where I had a big comparative advantage and I didn't even need to put that much effort to end up getting a great result for these subjects and therefore allowed me to have a higher chance of actually ranking first, even though that was never my intention or my goal. The second tip is to understand the assessment structure for each subject and therefore study for it appropriately. For each subject, it can be assessed differently. For example, there could be individual homeworks, individual assignments, group assignments, mid-semester exams, small quizzes throughout the semester, or big final exams or big projects at the very end. Again, you want to link this back to what assessments you perform better in. Is it exams or is it take-home assignments where you have more time, but generally the questions will be a lot harder and you need to apply yourself a lot more. Make sure if there are easy marks, such as participation marks, small homework assignments, where all you need to do is complete that task on time to get full marks, then make sure you really nail these early in the beginning. These are marks that are pretty much just given to you and they're there for you to lose, not gain. So what you wanna do is maybe even before you do your first mid-semester exam, you want to be on a 10 out of 10, just based on these little pieces of homework or participation in class. Then for the smaller assignments or smaller pieces of homework, what you can also do is just work together with other people in your course. Since generally this is allowed and by working together, you can help each other understand things a bit more and also make sure you guys are all working towards the right answers by checking each other's work. Other things you want to consider is how is it being assessed? For example, is it using multiple choice questions or do you have to write extended response essays? Is it very mathematical and right or wrong answer based or is it very subjective and essay based. Furthermore, you want to take into account whether that course that you're doing is based and assessed on a lot of projects and assignments, or is it very heavily focused on mid-semester and then a final exam. So what this means, if it was a mid-semester plus a final exam, that was probably worth about 80%, 
Then you want to be making sure you nail down each week's content and tutorial material and make sure you're ready to apply those in the final exam. Whereas if it was a project-based task, you don't really need to worry about memorizing it and committing it to memory. You just need to be able to have an open book and work through and apply these questions in a lot more difficult manner compared to if it was the final exam, but it means you're not very stressed out by having to memorize all these things. So just overall, make sure you use whatever works for you and whatever you're more comfortable with. My third tip is to make sure you keep up throughout the year. This can be a very costly mistake if you don't do this. And personally, I've been guilty of this a few times myself, actually. This has happened a lot of the time in cases where I don't like the subject, don't like the way it's being taught, or just find it really hard and difficult to understand the concepts. The worst feeling whenever you're in uni is spending the last week during Stuvac or study vacation, the week before the exam, and having to memorize and learn for the first time 13 weeks worth of content. And if you're doing this for more than one subject, you're going to be having a really, really difficult time. This doesn't mean you have to attend all the lectures in person if you want, which is what I do. I like to prefer and watch my lectures later because personally I find the speed of the lecture to either be too fast or too slow for my liking. So I like to skip around, maybe replay some bits later on when I'm watching the lecture at home. It's a lot more better for me that way. And when I was working part-time during the weekdays, what I'd do is in the weekends, I'd watch the recorded lectures to make sure I was on track and up to date for that subject. This will save you just so much stress throughout the semester and especially finally before the exam, where you finally have no idea what you're learning and you might need to just fill your brain with as much information as you can days before the exam and that's a lot of content and there's no way you're going to be able to do it. You want to be making sure that you're up to date with your tutorial questions, making sure you've done them before the tutorial class if you can, just figured out what you can't do and make sure you get those questions answered during the tutorial by asking your tutor or lecturer later on through an email or something like that. This way you can see where you went wrong and make sure those mistakes are fully fresh in your mind and you can focus on these specifically when you're studying for the final exam. Generally, the content each week builds on from material that was taught in the previous week. So what this means, if you struggled, let's say you fell behind in week three, then the week four material, you're not gonna have any idea how to do because you weren't there for week three. And even if you had time, then maybe in week five, you wanted to catch up. Now you're behind on week four and week three. So you have no idea how to do the week five content as well. And this just carries on effect, just keeps going until in the end, you're just overwhelmed and there's so much you don't know. Just really make sure you're up to date with everything and that you're not falling behind at all. It shouldn't actually be a lot of work. All there is is just watch the lecture each week and do the tutorial questions for each subject. That's literally it. You don't really have to do any additional study material outside of what's taught in the lecture and tutorial. One way of knowing that you're on top of things is how you're feeling before the final exam. If you're feeling confident, what I mean by this is four subjects where I've done this and kept up to date each week. By the time the final exam comes about, um, even the few days before it, I don't feel much stress at all and I don't actually need to do any revision, if much at all, because I know I've already understood all the concepts and I just need to apply myself. Maybe all I need is just to quickly skim through it and make sure that everything that I know is actually there. My fourth tip is to make sure you go to the lecturer's consultation hours or clinic tutorials whenever you need to. If you're stuck on a difficult problem with the concepts that's taught in the course, then what you can do is just go to the lecturer's room and ask them the question then and there. It helps you catch up really quickly by making sure you're focusing your 100% of the effort and getting them to explain just those concepts that you're struggling with. By doing this, you can also get some insights possibly about what the final exam will be like and also what kind of things the lecturer will probably put into it. Because they probably made the exam, they might just let slip a few things here and there and give you that unfair advantage with regards to understanding and knowing what will be in those exams and what they're looking for. For smaller subjects where there's less students in a course, the lecturer will know you a lot more personally and think that you're a hardworking student and therefore they might just mark you that little bit more leniently when it comes to those exams. You can also go to ask for help from senior students who've done the subjects before. Maybe you can grab their notes or study materials. Sometimes they might have access to past papers or past assignments and these are generally very similar year on year. And you can use these past papers as a good practice to get a feel of what's likely to come up in the final exams and stuff. My fifth tip is to scan marks in the early assessments. So let me explain the lecturer's mentality. Generally lecturers and sometimes professors as well, 
They're very lazy when it comes to teaching. They're a lot more focused on their research and teaching just is something on the side that they've kind of forced and have to do. So they really don't like it if you just keep emailing them and kind of nagging them all the time, asking questions about the content, asking them to explain things, asking them where you went wrong. It kind of really annoys them a bit. So they really want to get you off their backs and they just don't really want to deal with you. They don't want the hassle of getting complaints from bad students, maybe giving them negative feedback about their work. So what they like to do if they're smart, they'll generally just give up a lot more easily when it comes to, for example, giving you extra marks or marking you a bit more leniently when it comes to exams. Sometimes if you email them asking questions or just complain in general about certain exams, missing information or any errors that were present, by conveying how serious you are about getting those good marks, they'll be a bit worried and make sure that you get what you want or else you might make a complaint. This means it's just a neat little trick to help you get those extra marks that you probably didn't deserve and push yourself to get a mark that's a bit higher and possibly even just come first in the course. Hopefully from this video you've learned something useful that you can use to improve your grades dramatically and boost up your GPA and WAM. Let me know which of these tips you guys already use and what you think I might have missed down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video then make sure you give it a big thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel to not miss out on my future study content where it gives hacks and strategies to study more effectively and efficiently. As always take care and I hope to see you guys in the next video.